If you're setting up a site on which multiple users will be able to create content, and especially if you're using Drupal's comments system, you'll want to make sure that no one is able to use any HTML that you don't want them to use, especially things like image tags, and in some cases, maybe even anchor or link tags. Setting this up is pretty easy. If we go to configuration, under content authoring, we have text formats and editors. And we have a few different text formats here. We can create a new one if we want. Usually, these will suffice. We can do plain text, which won't allow any HTML whatsoever. On the other extreme, we can do full HTML, which will allow just about any HTML you want. It's usually not a good idea for anonymous or pseudo-anonymous users. This is only really used for administrators or people within the organization of the website so they can put anything that they want on a page. But for other users, you often want to use basic or restricted HTML. We can take a look at these basic HTML. If we click configure and scroll down a bit, we have our filter settings, limit allowed HTML tags and correct faulty HTML. In this field, we have the list of HTML tags that are allowed with this filter option. Notice this one can use images. Again, this is the basic HTML. And we can edit this if we want to. We can add or take things away from here. But we're not going to worry about that right now. If we back up, we'll, we can take a look at restricted HTML, which is more restricted than basic. We scroll the way down here and click limit allowed HTML tags. Then we see we have fewer options here. Most notably, we don't have the option to use the image tag. And again, we can edit this. So let's go and create an article very quickly. Content, add content, article. And we'll call this selecting the best padlock. I'm going to grab some text from dummy text from blind text generator. You can use this or whatever you want. Just paste something in there. So we have something for the body. Make sure that comments are open. They should be. And go ahead and save and publish this. Now we're briefly going to go to people and permissions. And we're going to talk about permissions a little bit more in depth later, but we're going to take a look at a few things right now. Up here in the comments section, for post comments, let's allow anonymous users to post comments. And just for the sake of making things easy, let's allow them to skip comment approval as well. And then we're going to scroll down and look for the filter section. And we're going to allow anonymous users to use the restricted HTML format. It should be already selected, but just, just double check. Make sure they cannot use basic or full. And that should be all we need to do. So let's save these permissions. And go back to your site. And then go ahead and log out. So here we are as a truly anonymous user. We see the article here. Let's add a new comment. I'll just put my name here. And I'm not going to worry about a subject for the comment. Let's just say blah, blah, blah. And we're going to try to leave an image tag. Notice it tells us here what HTML tags we're allowed to use. Let's see what happens if I try to source an image. So if we go to image source equals quotation mark, I've pulled up a random image here from Wikimedia. I'm just going to source directly to this image or try to at least. This is valid HTML, of course, but when I save, notice it keeps my comment, but it strips any non-allowed HTML tag. So this is just a good way, especially once again, if you have a large number of users, especially anonymous or pseudo anonymous users posting content or comments on your site, it's a good way to keep them from posting things like images or other things that you don't want them to be able to put on your website.